Did you know that Kobe, in the original word, do you know what it means? It means the door of God. Kobe means the door of God. Okay, listen, we love Kobe Bryant. I'm an LA a Lakers fan. I'm a Dodgers fan. You know, I, I'm an LA born, SoCal born and raised. Okay, so many people loved and looked up to Kobe. But his death, his passing, his name means the door of God, which means that God is opening up a door right now. And he's saying, repent, America. Turn back to me. Right. Turn back to Jesus Christ. America, United States, the world is in shock because God has just opened up a door, a new realm of revelation to show the world that we need him. We are in a year where prophecies are being unfolded before our very eyes, okay? We are literally in a prophetic moment right now. We are in a year that the, our matriarchs, patriarchs, people of old have prophesied about. We are in one of the most important years, pretty much, I believe, the most important year. Now, I, I'm very close with a lot of people who were his friends and are his friends. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm in a stream. I'm in a group of uh, prophetic people uh, that, you know, are very close with Bob Jones. We're some of his best friends till the day he died. And again, this prophetic word came to pass. Uh, what do you think about this uh, phenomenon? Uh, before I pass the mic to you, Marcus, one of the things that the Lord told me is that 2020 is going to be a record-breaking year. We're going to be seeing world records be broken, such as, uh, you know, the uh, the coronavirus. And, you know, you could talk about that, uh, you know, such as Kobe Bryant's death, which is a shocker, which, you know, is still, you know, and again, his ex-wife just committed suicide today, right? And uh, I mean, we're seeing so many things that are breaking world records. And, uh, you know, I mean, President Trump was the first president ever to go and present himself at the March of Life, standing pro-life okay not pro-choice but pro-life for uh you know the death the innocence of these unborn babies and we're seeing history being made but i want to talk about uh you know this prophecy with the kansas city chiefs and bob jones and uh just anything else on your heart there go ahead my friend well uh, i'll make this one quick uh if you guys don't know i want to just share it with you real quick i said if the kansas city chiefs win the super bowl revival is coming According to a prophecy going viral on Facebook before passing away in 2014, all right, this wasn't recent, prophetic minister Bob Jones reportedly told Sean Bowles, another prophetic minister, that God had told him this in a vision. Bob Jones told me at least 10 times, when the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, you will know that revival is about to come. God is raising up his apostolic Chiefs. Now, that's very interesting because I don't think that uh, nobody thought the Kansas City Chiefs were going to the Super Bowl back then. You could kind of be like, mm, you know, once they got Patrick Mahomes and stuff like that. But the fact that this happened, what you said earlier, some people, they don't um, they don't believe this, brother. How you talking about God can speak through colors and things like that. That's the only way the Lord has always spoke to me. And wow. And one thing, you know, people get so religious. They say, well, Brother Marcus, why do you keep talking about Kanye West and, and the Chiefs and Super Bowl and, and uh, these different things? Well, one thing that I learned, God uses that stuff as a means because church folks try to act like they don't care about these things. But if you notice, I've been doing videos for a long time. If you do a video saying, you know, let's go deeper into sacrifice or fasting or prayer, you don't get as many views. But if you start talking about Super Bowl and J-Lo and this and that and Kanye West, people click on it. And so that what I've learned to do is take stuff like this and show like, look, you can feel whatever you want to feel. You can feel like God is not speaking, but he is speaking because there's stuff like this yeah. that is happening that it's, it's just clearly like even with Kim Clemente. I mean, that was back in 2000, what, six? And he said they were going to say impeach, impeach, yeah. impeach and, and all of these kind of things. So I would all I want to say about it is expect something in 2020 expect god to do something and uh the lord showed me with president trump isaiah 45 right 45th president king cyrus in isaiah 45 he told the children of israel to go build the temple 
right? Now, he wasn't saved. He wasn't perfect. He wasn't some righteous man of God, but God used King Cyrus in that moment. And so seeing this prophecy right here, that revival is coming, right? If you couple that with what the Lord told me, he told me, tell my people if they build it in this season, I will bless it. Mm. But what you build, build it with the right heart. Souls are the heartbeat of God. That's what he cares about more than anything, he, more than your gifts, more than how good you sing, more than how good you preach. It has to be about winning souls, snatching them out of the, yeah. the clutches of hell. And if you do that with that heart, God is going to start blessing ministries and he's going to position people to receive this harvest and this revival that was prophesied by this anointed man of God. Wow. So good. You know, Kim Clement, uh, I never met him personally, but uh, I am close with his family. Uh, and I'm close, uh, you know, with the ministry. I've been there a number of times and I respect the man of God from South Africa. I mean, one of the greatest prophetic gifts of our era, uh, you know, that that most people have ever known or seen or heard. But, you know, I think it's so interesting right now, people of God, we are in a year where prophecies are being unfolded before our very eyes. OK, we are literally in a prophetic moment right now. We are in a year that the, our matriarchs, patriarchs, people of old have prophesied about. We are in one of the most important years, pretty much, I believe, the most important year, because every year has been built on upon this until where we are now. But we are in the most important year, and I believe the most important decade of all time, which means that we need to walk uh, with the right heart, like Marcus said. We need to walk uh, and circumspect. You know, we need to check our hearts. We need to guard our minds. There's a higher call. There's a greater fear of the Lord. You know, there's a greater cost. And God is getting us ready because there's such a, a big a responsibility on our hands in this season. I really believe, again, there's a reformation that's happening in the church, which means that, you know, as we are uh, turning the tables, as things are being exposed, as uh, leaders are falling, as leaders are being exposed on the public mainstream rampantly, you know, in the church, in government, you know, in all spheres of society, you know, we need to make sure that our hearts are, are pure and right before the Lord because he wants you to be a part of this end times army. He wants you to be a fulfillment of this prophecy as well in Jesus' name. So I think it's incredible, you know, again, with these prophecies, you know, I do believe that United States of America is turning red. I do believe that uh, with this next re-election, President Trump is going to win with a landslide. I do believe that, uh, you know, more and more uh, minorities and millennials are going to be voting red, are going to be voting for President Trump. Uh, you know, and as that, there's going to be prosperity and wealth. You know, I love what you were saying earlier, Marcus, about souls. It has to be about souls. But with that, there's going to be prosperity and wealth back to America. The debts will be canceled as we partner and side with Israel. There's going to be wealth that's coming. And not only that, but people are going to come to Jesus and souls are going to be one to the Lord. Um, you know, and I feel like as we were about to bring this uh, broadcast, Marcus, to a close, I, I want to talk about um, Israel. I want to talk about China, I want to talk about Iran or, or anything else that's on your heart, on your mind, uh, you know, as we're, as we're coming to a close right now. Well, uh, I'm not going to, you know, ramble because I know, brother, we could probably do two or three, four videos like this. And we just honestly, we're scratching the surface right now because we could go way deeper. But what I will say about uh, Israel, number one, is Genesis 12:3. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse you and all people on earth will be blessed through you. So one thing that I have noticed on the left, they're like anti-Israel and you've seen, you know, certain party members that they have. Um, I'm not going to say these uh, ladies names because I'm probably going to mispronounce it, but I'm pretty sure most people know who I'm talking about. They're so anti-Israel. It's crazy. It's like, man, why are you guys so upset about Israel? And then Trump is very pro-Israel. Now, some people say, oh, he's pandering to his base or whatever you want. The Bible says, I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse you. Let me tell you something. Everything is not the devil. People are always praying against the devil when bad stuff happens in their life. No, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. We ignorantly open ourselves up to curses by doing things like speaking against Israel, which I've actually seen some Christians and believers or they claim to be Christians and believers do are speaking against, you know, uh, who God has put into office and things like that. 
And, you know, with China and, and Iran, we see what's going on. And unfortunately, everybody, you know, even with uh, the illegal immigrants trying to cross the border, people make everything political. It's not that they really care about these people. It's not that they really care about these individuals because a lot of stuff has been happening for a while, but it's just a political talking point. And all I'm going to say that I think can sum up all of that, and I'll give it back to you. I just want to read this. I want to go to the book with it. Matthew 24. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled for these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, pestilences, earthquakes, which we've seen like ridiculous the last couple of days. And these are the beginnings of sorrows. They will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended. Many will be, everybody's offended, bro. Everybody's offended about anything. People are going to be offended by this video, what you post, what you tweet, when you take a stand. So I would say that if God shows you something, if God speaks something to you, you know, a lot of prophets are politically correct. They prophesy for a profit, dollars. But God's prophets wow. in the Bible were not politically correct. They knew, like, man, if I say this, Jezebel is going to get me. Mm -hmm. If I say this, King Herod's going to get me. If I say this, though, all of the children of Israel are going to be mad. Do you have the backbone in 2020? Because it seems we have a million prophets running around on the Internet online. All, right. all you prophesy about is cars. And, and my brother is right. You will get financial blessings. You will. But a kingdom finances are not to be used for you. God will bless you to be a blessing. And then seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added unto you. So, you know, let me say that on a side note. I just feel led to say that. Christians don't have to be broke, busted, and disgusted, and walking around looking miserable. You know, the Bible says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. The Bible yeah, says if on. you sow, you will reap. Come That's on. a biblical principle. So if I give and I give and I give, don't be mad when God gives it back. You know, don't don't judge people when you see them walking with the crown, when you don't see the cross that they carry. You don't know why my brother has his platform. You don't know why my brother is blessed. You don't know what he had to go through to get to where he's been. So think about it from that context. Be willing to put yourself out there for Jesus, even if it's not popular, and he's going to reward you and he's going to take care of you. And you're not doing it for the reward. That's just because he's a good God. He likes faith. Peter stepped off the boat in faith. And when you step off the boat in faith, that's when you see the supernatural. So for some of you, the stuff that we were talking about in the politics, you're going to have to step out and your family is mm -hmm. not going to step with you and your friends are not going to step with you. But then that's where you see the supernatural. Don't lean to your understanding. Oh, the waves are too big. Oh, I'm going to get backlash. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, I heard that. What is the spirit of God saying? And when you step in that, you're going to see God do some wonderful things. We are going to receive revival in 2020. We are going to Come see on. the enemy be exposed. We are going to see floodgates be open. We are Come going to on, see yeah. God show himself mighty. We are going to be victorious. God is going to take some people who have been in the back and bring them to the front. And he's going to take some people who have been on. in the front yeah. and bring them to the back. He's about to humble some people. He's about to expose yeah. some people Come all on. for his glory in 2020. Now, I, we said a lot of things in this video, but don't be afraid. Don't be yeah. scared. But you know what? God is in control. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's the uh -huh. beginning and the end. So what we're telling you is nothing to be scared or worried about. It's just something to rejoice about because we're closer to his return. Come on. So good. We are close. Come on. It's time for us as a church to rejoice. It's time for us to give thanks because our recompense is here. Our recompense is near. And, uh, you know, the Lord is moving. He's doing such great things in midst of you know famines and in the midst of wars and in the midst of you know these earthquakes and these devastations that's happening still the lord is moving and he's doing something great come on he has a great end time plan over your life over california over chicago over the united states over dc over the cabinet over the government of america i'm telling you all the kingdoms of the world will become the kingdom of our god and the holy spirit is anointing certain people heads of leadership 
He is, he, listen, he's either going to remove them like Vashti, or he's going to put into place a new Esther. Wow. And God is removing the Jezebels and he's putting into place the Elijahs. So there's a removal that's happening and there's a renewal, removal and a renewal that is happening. So in this season, praise God, because it's a new year, it's a new decade. He's doing something fresh, something new that we've never seen before. And we say yes and amen to Bob Jones' prophetic words, that when the chiefs win, that the apostolic chiefs will be released and guess what? Yesterday, February 2, 2020, right, right, 2 2, 2020, that was a palindrome year, right? There was a palindrome date, which means that whether you put it forward or backward, or backward and forward, in whatever sequence, numbers or letters, it's going to be the same thing. We are not going to have another palindrome year for another, what, 101 years. Before, it was 909 years. Now, this is a sign and a wonder. Listen, God will speak to signs in the sky, as it says in the book of Joel, as it says in Genesis. The Lord is still speaking. He's still moving. And guys, I want to close with this here, because my friend Johnny Enlow gave this profound word about the death of Kobe Bryant, okay? All right, listen, guys, you do not know if tomorrow's promised, okay? And I'm not a dooms gloom type of preacher, but you do not know when something may happen. Is your life right with Jesus? Do you believe in Christ Jesus as your one and only Savior? Not this prophet, not this teacher, not that religion. Come on, even Buddha himself said that I am not the way. I can help lead you to the way, but I am not the way. That's what Buddha himself said, okay? So do you know Jesus? What happens? What's going to happen if you get in a car crash? If you get, uh, you know, into an accident or, or something happens? Is your life, is your heart right with Jesus? I want to give you this word that my friend Johnny Enlo, uh, he was just with us recently. But did you know that Kobe, in the original word, do you know what it means? It means the door of God. Kobe means the door of God. Okay, listen. We love Kobe Bryant. I'm an L.A. A Lakers fan. I'm a Dodgers fan. You know, I, I'm an L.A. born, SoCal born and raised. Okay, so many people loved and looked up to Kobe. But his death, his passing, his name means the door of God, which means that God is opening up a door right now. And he's saying, repent, America. Turn back to me. Right. Turn back to Jesus Christ. America, United States, the world is in shock. Because God has just opened up a door, a new realm of revelation to show the world that we need him no matter what. Listen, that morning before Kobe and his daughter Gianna, before they boarded the helicopter, we know news reports have said that he went to the Catholic Church. He went to Mass that morning before he hopped on the helicopter. Is your life right with Jesus, guys? Come on. It's, the Lord is opening up a door. He's opening up a window of opportunity for you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, for you to get your heart right. And right now, if you need to get your life right with the Lord, I want you to pray right now and say, Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my past. I give you my present. I give you my future. I need you, God. I need you, Jesus. People are coming to the Lord like Kanye West. If God can do it uh, in Kim Kardashian's life, who was pretty much like a soft, a soft core porn star. If God can do it in these people, God can do it with you. Father, I pray right now for every single person watching now live on the replay that you will touch them, you will minister to them. I thank you, God, that there's a conviction that's coming, a conviction of our need for you, Jesus. I bless you. Welcome to the family of God, people of God. Welcome to the family of God in Jesus' name. Marcus, anything you want to say as we close here? uh not really brother it's amazing man we probably can do this again sometime uh, just know that they i think they've labeled this uh this last generation generation z it's the last letter of the alphabet you know so just something to think about there's so much prophetic stuff happening and there's also a lot of demonic activity as well a lot of spiritual stuff and so you just want to be aware you don't want to be a casual christian you know uh, a lot of people they just go to church on sunday and they do their two songs in their sermon but there's, there's, the war didn't stop. The war isn't only fought on Sunday. There's a war going on Monday through Saturday. Yeah. And the Bible says to take on the whole armor of God for a reason. All right. So, you know, you have a place on the battlefield. We all have a place. Your place not might not look like mine or Brother Ben's, but you have your place that God is calling you to. 
uh, whatever you know level that is and just do it and chase after it and and watch god do great things in 2020 i love you guys and i thank you for having me on here brother marcus bless you everybody let's give brother marcus rogers a big round of applause <laughs> Praise the Lord. We love this man of God. Thank you, Marcus, for being with us and just being the voice of truth that you are in Chicago, uh, in, in the United States, on social media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of that. And uh, just keep being a voice for his glory, my friend. Blessings. Guys, just give him a round of applause. Guys, this is Ben Lamb with our good friend guest, Marcus Rogers, today. And this is the first episode of Prophecy USA. I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Ben Lim Global. Follow us on social media, on any stream. And I'm telling you, the prophetic word of the Lord will set you free. The prophetic word of God is much greater than any pathetic, conundrum, hypocritical, lower second heavens level, a fleshly carnal type of Christianity. But the prophetic word of the Lord is sharp like a double-edged sword and is delivering the people of God. I pray today right now that you would have a greater revelation and love for Jesus Christ because he's the only way, the only truth and the light. Guys, I bless you. I thank you for watching. This is our first episode of Prophecy USA. I want you to uh, comment below on what spoke to you the most. Comment right now. Subscribe and comment. What spoke to you the most? What highlighted, what was highlighted to you the most? And I want you guys to continue to follow the Lord with all of your heart and watch Jesus shine all across the United States and in the nations. God bless you guys. Shalom. This is Pastor Ben Lim here with Prophecy USA. Blessings to you.